Camille is the Dean of Admissions at MIT. Uh, just trying to go through a little bit. First, let me talk about why we have an SAT requirement in the first place. Uh, we dedicate research analysis team. So they, they do a lot of research, right? They did a lot of research to see if this was even necessary to bring back. And they came back with very clearly that it, it is, right? And there's reasons for that. So in short, our research, research has shown that in most cases, we cannot reliably predict students will do well at MIT unless we consider standardized test results alongside, and that's key, right? Alongside grades, coursework, and other factors. These findings are statistically robust. This has been true, guys. Test taking, there's been so much political, right? On both sides of, of if you follow American politics, on both sides, there's so much politics that go into these tests that it's hard to really get a real answer. But if you really break down the data, and this goes for junior colleges, for military personnel, for standardized testing, it's not always the same standardized test, but just say that everybody takes the same test going into the military. For junior colleges, military personnel, top, top universities like MIT, there has been a robust, a unbelievable sample size that says testing is great for considering whether or not a student will get through that, that course. And I'll tell you exactly why. This has nothing to do, the reason I know that, it has nothing to do, oh, Hannah, hey, great, for all you, to you, to all my juniors, I love it. Okay, if you have, yeah, great. I love any referrals, guys, for the channel, for the app, I love it. I always appreciate it. Okay. But guys, again, as we go through this, um, when you take when you go to MIT, and again, there's a lot of students that let me tell you what happens on a on a Saturday at, on a Saturday morning. Okay, and this is at any college, but MIT, right? Saturday morning, you will have a math final, right? I don't know why, but math finals seem to be universally on Saturday, Saturday mornings. And I don't know if the SAT and the ACT do this on purpose, but you'll have an SAT. Sorry, you'll have a math final in college, right? College math final. And you'd be amazed, but what's crazy is that, and, and thumbs up if you already knew this, did you know that college classes, major college classes, like big college classes where you might have 300 students in a class are graded on the exact same bell curve based on the class, right? Same bell curve that the SAT and the ACT is graded on. If you knew that, that's awesome. Thumbs up if you think that's, that, that's pretty cool, right? That the idea that it's, you're not just taking this test to take it. When you go to class at MIT, if you take a 300-person math class your freshman year, you're going to be graded on the same curve, right? And the middle 50 the, the middle 50 percent, right, of that curve is a B minus. So you might take an engineering class and you get a B minus if you hit the average of the class. You take three three final or three midterms and a final, right? And whatever the average is is a B minus in the class. Okay, so that that's how most colleges work. Right, and then you have to be in the top one percent to get an A in the class, or top five percent, or whatever it is. Right, everybody, thumbs up if that makes sense. Thumbs up, guys. If you're watching live, thumbs up, or if you're watching after, thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay, so you might have to get right. A, you have to get in such a. But but when you think about this, right, and you think about MIT, this is fifty percent, right? This is the average at fifty percent at MIT. If we take the bell curve, right, of the SAT and the ACT, and this is why the SAT and the ACT are still so important, the, the SAT middle 50%, I think, is like 980 now, right? So if you get a 980 on the SAT, you're, in the, you're in the, right in the middle of the 50% of all students that take that. Does everybody see that if you go to MIT, this average right here, right, this MIT average, okay, if we apply that, that's like all of the students on the SAT that are way over here that are scoring 1,500 plus scores. So that means you have to be in the top 5% of the top, top students that go to MIT in order to do that. And so the reason I think why he's saying this, right, why this uh, Dean Schmill is saying this is because alongside these, if you take that math final and you're not a good test taker, right? And you go to MIT, this is not true of all majors, but if you're a math major at MIT, that you are competing with the top, top, top students in the country, in the world, that are the, the best math students in the world, okay? And, and so if you're not capable of, of sitting through a long test, you are, you, you're frankly, you're not gonna do well on that test at MIT. That doesn't mean you're not a smart person. That doesn't mean that you're not gonna succeed in life. It just means that you're not going to do well on that math test when you have the best test takers in the world also taking the same math test and you're graded on MIT's 50% curve. Does everybody see that? Right? This 50% curve is like the this 50 this middle all of this out here. 
Okay, and, and that's why it's still so critical, right, alongside those. And so what MIT definitely doesn't want to do, they'll take all the backlash, right, in terms of not admitting students, having a really low admissions rate, all the stuff that goes into this, they'll accept that more than they'll accept taking in a student who then fails out in one year because they weren't prepared to go to MIT. That's, that is ultimately, guys, this is a perfect breakdown mathematically of why, uh, of realistically, right, this bell curve, of realistically why the, uh, the SAT and the ACT are absolutely critical at a school like MIT and really at any technical university or if you're going into an engineering program anywhere, this is why this is so critical. And, and he even admits it, right? Dr. Schmill says it, uh, right? And the math component of the testing turns out to be the most important.